Hello and welcome once again to uh, UCL Global Health. Anyone that's worked in development knows that the most important uh, indicator of success in running programs is all about institutional development and governance uh, in a country. Uh, and yet this is an area that is very under-researched. And I'm joined today by Dan Rogger, who's an economist and doing his PhD on civil service bureaucracies in Nigeria and has just published a fascinating paper with uh, Professor Imran Razul. Yeah. And you looked at the Nigerian civil service so on quite a large scale. What exactly did you do? So I worked in Nigeria civil service since 2005 and one of the things that always frustrates people who work in Nigeria is that you have two things. One is a stereotype that organizations just don't function. They have so much money, there's a trillion dollars of resources in, in oil and gas. And it just can't be converted into, you know, good welfare for the, for the people. And so what we wanted to understand was, you know, is this true across the entire um, government? And so the first thing you have to do is you have to measure outputs. And what we did was we went and measured how effectively Nigeria's organizations performed, a, a sort of representative sample of its uh, organizations and what's amazing is that there are the laggards the guys who don't produce anything but and this goes into the second thing there are also the stars who everything yeah. that they're supposed to produce they produce that's true or actually in almost every ministry I've dealt with and organization you've got stars and laggards absolutely and it's identified but so what we just like you were in finance ministry I was in the presidency and so that gave me access and I think why there's been so little work on you know, the internal workings of developing countries is because getting the data is almost impossible. Because I'd worked there for a number of years as a quasi-civil servant, I was sort of able to access organisations in a way I wouldn't otherwise. So, so you were in the presidency, but you had access across all ministries? Basically, so we had to stay away from police, army, etc. Sure. And what we're interested in is the social sector, so health, <clears throat> but also agriculture, education and so on. And so what we wanted to do was understand why do we see this diversity? Why do some organisations implement so much and some organisations implement so little? So coming from an economics background, there's been a sort of resurgence in the literature on management. And in the private sector, there's now incredibly good evidence that management practice explains a lot of the variation in how productive firms are. Right. So what we wondered was, does management matter in Nigeria? And then this is, I think, a hot topic in, in general, what is the best way to manage in a developing country in a public sector context? Right. So what we did, we then went and again taking a sort of representative sample that we had data on the implementation of projects, we went Who to collected managers. that? Did you? Or? So that was, that was something the president decided. Right. So what he said was Nigeria got debt relief and he said we're going to take a fraction of this money and we're going to channel it through the ministries and departments instead of taking a whole new structure and putting all the money through that let's actually channel the funds and one of the reasons to do that was as he always said pouring water through a hose to see where the holes are so it gave us a real picture of where were the problems so it gave us this snapshot 2006 and 7 fiscal years of what, what was happening to money in Nigeria and so that's how we knew that there was these differing productivity. So we then went back and basically did surveys with managers in each of the organisations. How So along multiple margins, how do you reward people? How do you monitor people? Do you give them flexibility? So it's not uniform. You don't have a system there where everyone is paid a certain amount to do something or or a particular management culture, there's quite a lot of variation. So that's, I think that's a great question because ex ante, before you, know, you go and do this survey, you think to yourself, well, you know, what diversity should we find? A lot of people were saying to us, managers just take the public service rules of Nigeria and then they implement those in a uniform way. But of course, there's real authority and informal authority. So the real authority is the public service rules. And then do we see any variation away from that? Well, the first thing is we found huge variation. Right. in the way that organisations are managed. And what we were really interested in was two margins. One was the kind of classic new performance management. So that's giving people incentives and then monitoring them and seeing whether if they achieve their um, targets... You, know, they, you they get, get bonus. bonus. Exactly. Right. The other one, and this is kind of coming from 
uh, a long public administration literature saying that's not what you need to do for public sector. The public sector you deal with teamwork, really complex projects. So what you need to do is you need to give people autonomy, the ability to go and actually undertake... So no individual bonuses? No individual this bonuses. This would be... Would you get team bonus or not? Just, just so, so creating a culture of teamwork. This is literally a, a culture of, of teamwork, a, an environment in which people are able to engage with the role that um, they're defining for themselves. So, you know, what are your targets, etc. And then giving them the flexibility and independence to go out So and this is fascinating. Them. So you've got two kind of broad comparison groups, the teams and the individual incentive groups. And what were your outcomes? How did you assess? Let me just quickly say, so what's really interesting is it could be that these are opposites, that places that give lots of performance management actually give less autonomy. But it could be that you actually do places that give lots of performance management then need to give their, their staff the autonomy to go off and actually undertake the, the activities. What we found was a correlation of about 0.6 or so. So they are positively mean? correlated. Right. So they organizations that have more performance management also have more autonomy. But they're not correlated enough that we can't prize apart the impacts of the two. Right. So some organizations yeah. have loads of autonomy, giving loads of flexibility to their staff, and very little performance management. And then you know you see all, all different combinations. Right, right, right. So what we did is we took the productivity measures from that survey that the presidency had done. So that where they'd gone off and they'd taken a representative sample of all the projects and then said, you know, what was the proportion of the projects completed? And this was, this was 4,700, so it's quite oh, a so it's project, big project. About 8% of Nigeria's social sector. So it's a big survey. And then what we could do is take the management scores and see how they correlated okay. with the projects. And? So, um, the first thing is management matters hugely. Right. So I'm going to tell you some results in a second, but if we change management, a standard deviation, so that's a measure of, of change, one way in the directions that I'm about to tell you, we can transform productivity by about 25%. So a quarter of productivity just by tweaking management. Okay. So they're not optimizing. Something's going wrong. Then what do we find along the two margins? So the first thing was the autonomy giving bureaucrats in Nigeria, a corrupt country, in which, you know, typically people would assume if you give freedom to bureaucrats, Money they'd abuse it. Increase productivity by, and standard deviation would increase productivity by about 14%, right? Wow. And performance management would basically retard productivity by about 12%. <laughs> now, what's great about that is, so we've got very little evidence on the public sector, and people kind of argue either way. You know, they say, oh, no, come on, new public management would say, we've, we've got to have performance management. The public sector is going to work exactly the same as it does in the private. But was that we were able to survey civil servants across all these organizations and then say, well, this is a finding. Why is this happening? So this is the, this is the bit I think. So let me get this right. So teams are better than bonuses. Independence. Incentives. Independence is better than incentives. Okay. So these and guys even in places where you're worried about financial irregularities, you're going to get a much better performance. That's what we find in Nigeria. And, and, you think, so. and it's also what the old management theorist Deming would say in the post-war area. You know, he would say, look, you've got to do something about teams and don't worry about individual bonuses. So this is in the management literature. This is... I, I'm, you know, no, you're on a close. We need this in the bank, don't we? <laughs> so, so you'd think to yourself, um, you're not saying anything new, right? So, yeah. some people came up to us and they were like, telling us that giving bureaucrats autonomy and not giving them performance management—that's not new. No, but right? it's, it is new evidence. But no. what we were able to do was say why. And so, you've mentioned teams a few times. And so, the first, you know, the first kind of um, thing you might think is on complex problems. If you give someone performance management, then what they're going to do is instead of going for the stuff that's hard to measure, they're just going to basically go for the easy stuff to measure, focus on that. But that's not how you solve complex problems. So, uh, just in conclusion, clearly much more research needs to be done. Absolutely. This is a sort of ecological study. It's not an intervention study. Yeah. And that is something that might be considered. But really the message coming out to... African policymakers 
and perhaps not just African, perhaps bank policy <laughs> should be that this idea that rewarding people individually is the way to go is not particularly evidence-based. Creating autonomy in teams within limits is the way to go. And there's a lot of huge, I mean, potential uh, benefits to come from that. Would you, would you support that as a conclusion? So if 38% of projects in Nigeria were not being implemented, and we're saying that you can increase productivity by 25%, not just in terms of saving money, but in terms of welfare, everything you're saying could have very big benefits. And push up immunisation coverage rates, improve drug supply to hospitals. Improve, improve agricultural drugs. yields, improve you know, primary yeah. health centre, the way they're run, but also improve education. Huge. This is, the, the findings were true across every sector. That was the fascinating thing. Fantastic. So economic research is a good thing to do. Sometimes. <laughs> Dan, thanks very much. Lovely to be here.